Hello, I'm Matt Hopper, this is my house around which I've arranged some of my art from the past few years I'm just going to walk around uh, talking about it and the idea is I'm trying to write a, a personal statement artist statement type thing and the first one I wrote sounded really dry so I'm just going to just talk random stuff about about my work and then watch back and uh, try and get a more natural vibe to to where I'm coming from kind of thing. Uh, we'll go we we'll start off in my uh, my concrete period. We'll have to go into the garden. This, this all began uh, quite a while ago, a couple of years ago when I started my university course. It's a lovely day, I didn't think it was uh, November. This is the first concrete thing I made. This is not the gravestone of Matt Hopper. Um, it looked beautiful when I first made it. I. Um, Something's written something inside it. That's weird. Uh, I put um, vegetables. There was a, either side there was a banana and a, a chili arranged decoratively, and there, in the middle there was a, a leek, a big leek, and carrots either side of it, and they just rotted away to leave the uh, the voids. It's kind of speaking about death and everything, but it's quite a weird thing happened. Um, I took pictures around the estate of it uh, and of myself and um, then I took it to Rudston Monolith which is a 4,000 year old um, uh, prehistoric monolith kind of a mysterious, enigmatic, powerful place I like to visit to charge my psychic energy sometimes and I found out fairly recently that my ancestors are buried in the graveyard there um, Martha and William Hopper and uh, Edward Hopper who died in the 1800s I thought I'd take the picture of this gravestone next to some of their their graves in the in this powerful ancient place so I, I lent it up against um, Edward Hopper's grave I walked away came back and the my gravestone was flat on its face and, and smashed and that kind of freaked me out. I saw it as some kind of a... I was really upset at first and then I thought... No, it's um, it's a message from beyond the grave <laughs> that I've got to move on or something. It was meant to happen. So I, I took the gravestone to the, the sea, to uh, Caton Bay, where, where the monolith itself had been dragged from uh, 4,000 years ago. And I was going to throw it in the North Sea there and leave it, but um, as kind of a an end to this little ritual thing. But I couldn't leave it in the end, and I, and I dragged it back. <laughs> so there it is. Next concrete thing I made was this, which is also smashed. This is a uh, it's the houses of my estate, kind of with a stone circle in the middle. There is a stone circle in the middle of my estate. It's not an ancient stone circle. It was left there by the council on the site of a, a row of shops which had to be demolished after a big explosion damaged them beyond repair um, and in front of those shops I uh, took a picture of myself once before they blew up obviously <laughs> about midnight trying to levitate and wrote a poem about death and posted it on my blog and that all, all kind of freaked me out as if I was i foretold the event or something. So this kind of refers to that and it's just the the mystery of the that I see in, in ordinary places and the spaces we live and the stories you build around them. But I was taking it home from college and I, it smashed and it smashed right along the edge of the stone circle where the line of the shops would have been. <laughs> and, so again, I was upset at first, but then I thought, no, it's, this is a message from beyond. Um, 
This is another sad story. Um, it's in memory of Westbull's farm and the people who worked this land. Um, I made this to. It was actually. It was actually on on. It's in, well, this old housing estate used to be a, a farm, which I've traced back to the medieval times, and that was just a, an acknowledgement of it. And I put it beneath some old hawthorn trees, which was part of a head used to be part of a hedgerow of the farm, just on the edge of the estate. Um, unfortunately, it was someone smashed it over. Some kids probably, but. It was only there for a short while. I hoped it would be there for a long time, long after my death, but it wasn't to be. But again, I, th I thought, well, this is this is a, a statement from the gods telling me that it wasn't supposed to be there. It was <laughs> my. It was a maybe it was an insult to the gods. So they were working through these kids and they. They brought it down, and I brought it back. So there is just a memory of uh, the original intention. The last concrete piece, this one. Um, I declare that for each day, the register opposite bears my signature, always marked, no art, I did, no art. I also acknowledge the receipt of nothing in respect of the above period. Note, each time you sign this, you are declaring that you did no art on the day or days for which you sign, and on any previous days signed for or marked no art. Ministry of Antisocial Insecurity, copyright. 1973 to 2013 Coombe Transmissions <laughs> That's uh, I wanted to reinterpret a piece of art from Hull from the, from its history something that had been some art that had been done here in the past and I thought of uh, Coombe Transmissions who used to be a performance art group here they were evolved into uh, Thobbing Gristle the industrial band performance band thing <laughs> so I got in contact with Cozy Fanny Tutti who used to live in Hull she was born in Hull and this is where they they began the story and um, this was one of the pieces of art that was suggested she suggested would be relevant for today because it was a it's like a pastiche on um, the benefit forms of the of the early 70s that they, they had them printed and uh, but they removed the word work and replaced it with art so I declare that for each day the register opposite bears my signature always marks no work I did no work but it's just it's no art it was a comment on it's called Ministry of Antisocial Insecurity it's a comment on the the absurdity of the benefits system and uh, the hoops they make you jump through to get your money. So that's my concrete work. That was all that was all made in the past couple of years. Uh, through here. Here we have a uh, just a nice bit of sunlight falling over it casting shadows which is quite appropriate really because it's all about shadows I just drew shadows I wanted to draw a, a, a tree on my housing estate which um, beside some bricks and I just wanted to draw the shadows and so that is it that's just the shadows the dappled shadows on the on the floor on a, on a nice Autumn day, <laughs> quite a powerful little piece, but ultimately it's quite. It doesn't say a lot. This is another black and white drawing I did. 
of my housing estate. It's of um, it's a place just just a few metres away from where I'm stood actually. It's because on the other side of that fence there used to be um, just across the way from me uh, the whole grammar school, which is uh, dated back to like the 1300s. It's a really old institution, and uh, I went there as a young lad. <laughs> um, And I'm basically stood in the driveway of that school, which is it's been demolished now, it's long gone, sadly. Um and I'm looking across to these houses. It's called From the Fence to the Wall, which is a line from a Joy Division song. A band that's had a massive impact on my life. The singer, I kind of identified with him. He was a tortured soul from the north of England. <laughs> suffering in these post-industrial landscapes and um, yeah it's it's a, it's a real pretty piece it, it, I, I'm, I'm happy with it it's it just it captures my housing estate it's just the the trees and the, the way they overhang and overlook everything and But they're always battling against these imposing, looming brick walls and windows, looking out on them, and, and fence. It's all tied down with fences, iron fencing. I don't know. It just it makes me happy. <laughs> and then another piece of work. It's a big one. This. It speaks about. Um, when I was a child, I had a visit. We, our family visited um, a place called Carnac in Brittany, just in um, in France, and um, it's possibly where the megalithic culture started. Possibly not, but it's one of the oldest stone, massive stone monuments in uh, in Europe. It's rows and rows of stones. It's like 5,000 years old, maybe even older, but they're really mysterious. We don't know a lot about the people who built them. I just love that mystery. That's what I'm all about. <laughs> well, I love the fact that they did it and we don't know why. I don't know why I do most things. Artistically myself, I just do them and then make up reasons afterwards. But that that um that that is a that, that's an alley, a ten foot we call them in Hull. And it's that where I grew up. I played with my friends down there and um funny enough my, my parents also played down there when they were children. And my granddad lived down there and he remembers being blown across the room from a, a bomb dropped by uh, Hitler and his henchmen in the war, so it's deeply rooted in my uh my own personal mythology and I put the stones just set outside of the picture on this grid this that follows the perspective but it's just set out of time and out of space kind of thing just the stones of the ancestors I suppose and the and the mystery that that can be hidden in these ordinary places if you just look hard enough and if you think creatively, if you try and transcend these, the ordinariness in your imagination. Oh. These are done very recently, and this is Remembrance Sunday, funnily enough. So uh, I'm thinking about my granddad and all the horrible things both of them went through in the war, and my grandmother, mothers. Um, Quite technically fairly good paintings, but very ugly, especially this one of uh, Her Majesty. I'm not a royalist. Um, I just, yeah, politicians. It was going to be part of a triptych, but I'm not sure I can finish it now. I will do eventually, but 
I put it on hold. Um, speaks about the state and the way it interlinks with the crown and who they really serve and uh, my thoughts on freedom and uh, personal freedom basically rooted in uh, anarchism, libertarianism, anti-government which is always another word for fascism uh, another drawing which I began a long time ago and then I only finished fairly recently it's uh, a dramatic sky and it's some houses and it's a big monolith uh, I took I, I visited East Hull I, I'm a West Hull person but I I visited East Hull quite a while ago now, about 10 years ago, on my way to see uh, Mick Ronson's grave, a local musician who played for a, uh, formed the, for the band supporting uh, David Bowie, they were the, the spiders from Mars kind of thing. One of my, one of the local heroes I've always admired, he was really talented. Um, uh, and this this scene just stood out at me. Just all houses were boarded up, and the, it just looks so desolate and empty. But there must have been a lot of adventures had there down the years, and horrors experienced, and love felt, and and it was just uh, it was just dead. So. I just, it just felt right to put a, one of these ancient monoliths in the, between them. Just plonked, bang, in the middle of the road. <laughs> Where it really shouldn't be. It just speaks about the um, the mystery. The unknowable, really. And that's, that's hidden behind those walls and those windows and behind time. Stones always represent mystery to me. A lost golden age as well, maybe. Uh, this is a lino cut, it was very painstaking work. Um, I, I cut it out of some lino, obviously, and then made a series of prints from it. Uh, it's a bridge near me. Also, this bridge, funnily enough, which is a drawing. Uh, it's a bridge I've never actually crossed. It's just behind where I live now and where I've always lived in this area. Um, it's also directly behind my primary school, also the whole grammar school, and my junior school. And I always looked across from the, when I was in the primary school playground, looked across at the bridge, and for some reason I've never been across it, I've never had a, any reason to, so. It's called Die Brücke, which is a German artistic movement. Um, probably won't ever cross it, but again, it's just uh, looking at environments and thinking about them and looking for new ways to uh, experience them, developing them in your imagination and uh, creating stories around them. This is a, um, a Nintendo Game Boy painted just the shell of it. Uh, I'm a big big fan of retro games and uh, I used to love escaping into worlds like Zelda and exploring them on my little Game Boy and other computers. That's just my homage to that that period of gaming, the, the 8 bit. We had very rudimentary graphics and sound, but you you let your imagination go. <laughs> the games had a lot of charm, I think. This is a very ordinary scene indeed. I wanted to draw the most ordinary scene on my estate. But it ended up not looking very ordinary at all, I suppose. 
it's quite beautiful. Uh, it's Two, two semi-detached houses looked look down looking down a road it's called beneath beneath television skies which is a, another a lyric from a Dawes song um, it speaks about lots of things We're, we live in these little boxes uh, the vast sky above is just blank but it's filled with transmissions and the airwaves that we all soak in. I just wanted to celebrate one of the most ordinary uh, places. I wanted to spend a lot of time making a detailed drawing study of it. Just to just to just to say acknowledge that I love I love it. I love the place. <laughs> This is a, I don't like this really, but it was an experiment. It's a, a scene in North Lincolnshire just across the River Humber from here. A chemical work, uh, cement factory, sorry, and uh, lots of rolling countryside. It was painted with lots of different palettes and at different times, so they didn't quite work together. You see the field changes, it just looks a bit of a mess really, but it's alright. Um, I did more studies in different ways, quick, real quick ones using different methods, different colour palettes just to capture the scene in different ways um, it was a good experiment but kind of strange painting some of them but I don't know, I don't know what it's about that one it's about the landscape obviously I love being in high places looking down on them Another drawing of my estate. That's the first big pen drawing I did. Um, it's called Open the Windows of Your Heart and Talk to Your Neighbours, which is a piece of graffiti that appeared around Paris during the days of the uh, Situationist International. There's not a lot to say about that. It's, it's a nice old tree and some houses. <laughs> Same with a lot of my drawings, but this is a drawing, pen drawing with a bit of colour pencil. It's a Scott Street Bridge and my shadow. Scott Street Bridge is it's always stuck in the upwards position, and um, I also painted it here. Um, that paint is called Stuck Up, as it's there. Uh, the bridge is stuck up. <laughs> And there's my shadow there, and there's also some wiggly lines which are supposed to be represent like the um, traces of particles of the um, particle colliders to speak about the, the eternal mystery of the universe kind of thing. Someone I vaguely knew of back in the day when I was younger, I used to go to nightclubs, I used to walk across that bridge when it used to be down, and we used to walk home. Someone jumped off it, who's in a local band, and killed himself about 1990 or something on New Year's Eve. Um, these are some houses, again, a circle of houses, speaking about my uh, that con concrete thing I made. Uh, just blank houses with a monolith in the middle, people around, just there. Uh, just to give it a sense of community and and mystery as well. What what happened? What would happen if this big monolith appeared in the middle of these houses and people would just congregate like you know, kind of a two thousand and one space odyssey kind of thing. That's a very quick painting. It's just a uh, a rock in front of some houses <laughs> in my estate, and that's a painting of Super Mario, one of my heroes. Another painting. Um, that was a colour experiment really, just to uh, another scene of my estate. I wanted to mess put lots of blue in the bricks and blue in the pavement and yellow, just make it look garish and see how it worked. It's, it's quite an ugly painting, it's beautiful as well, I don't know. 
these are experiments I did in, in one day just slap the pin on really quickly um, again around my stairs quite really thickly applied it's not the way I usually work I usually take my time but uh, final one I suppose this is me naked that's Totoro myself hanging naked above a stone circle on my housing estate um, again I, I realised afterwards that I was in I was adopting the pose that which I was in when I took that picture of myself in front of the uh, houses in front of the shops even that when that night when I walk when I, when I walk around the estate and uh, just before the shops blew up and that's the stone circle that appeared afterwards on the site of the shops it's an important place for me and I just wanted to spend a lot of time doing a a nice big painting, just uh, exploring it. So, it's a strange place. It's a it's a modern stone circle kind of thing. It's like usually the earth is about like four thousand years old, three thousand years old, but that's about a year, two years old. But I. It became an important place for me, so it got me wondering why, why, why do we revere these stone circles so much? It's just the age, really. We don't know why they were put there. We don't have any direct connection with them or the people who made them. And here is one in front of my a modern council estate. Um, without any solar or astral alignments, it was just put there just maybe the council had some stones left over so they just plonked them there in front of a, a lot of old houses but I made that connection in my mind and it became a little focal point for me, a little, a little extra Notch in the story of uh, of the estate for me, and I like to go there and just sit sometimes. And I buried things in the mill, and little silly rituals. And yeah, uh, uh, I put myself naked in this almost. Christ-like position, just to, I was kind of poking fun at the idea of this, um, the way people get really into themselves when they're artists and they, there's a kind of pastiche on that and yeah, <laughs> you kind of, worship yourself as this creative almighty God. <laughs> Yeah. So that's that's my little tour. I'll watch it back and hopefully find some ideas. Thank you for watching. I have a really small SD card so I couldn't fit the whole the whole thing on one in one sitting. So I'm just going to say a little bit about um, the video, some of my video work. Um, first one, I'll st start off with uh, Revolutions, which um, was a little film I made. Um, I thought I'd drive around a roundabout for an hour and film it and record myself, my thoughts as I was going around. 
my initial idea for this was um, just madness really it just sounded completely st stupid and, and cool to drive around a roundabout for an hour as part of a, an artistic performance and I started thinking more deeply about it and um, a few things came to mind poking, poking fun at um, just the absurdity of life really and the direction the st we try to give it meaning but we're just really on the road to nowhere usually um, or just watching people going on the roundabout, joining it and then leaving it and it just all seems really stupid so I was just acknowledging that stupidity but I was also thinking about um, actions and rituals and the way they can change pe people and the way people see see themselves and see the world if you just turn the world on its head by doing something completely ridiculous like that you, you do transform yourself and you do transform the world and, and in a way that that is what mag that is the definition of magic there's nothing too mysterious about it so it became a magic spell like circling this roundabout creating a maybe a, a vortex a magical vortex which it transformed my world um, and then there's also the idea that every action every decision creates a tangential universe a parallel universe and with each de decision each decision is a quantum event that sets off another universe in another direction so I was creating a it was a spell that I was casting and I was creating a, an, another universe a, a universe that I was more happy with where I didn't have to worry too much about conforming and, and rules <laughs> I was kind of breaking those rules and and there's there's another universe where I didn't where I didn't do that. So it was quite a simple thing really, just doing doing this action. Creating a universe where I did <laughs> where I did it. And when I stopped it felt really weird. It, it felt almost as if I was stoned. I was, I pulled up just down the uh, on the road, joining onto the roundabout. And as soon as I stopped, it was as if I was flying backwards in a circle. And just the uh, same kind of effect as if you spin around, I suppose, and then stop, and you become all dizzy. But it's quite interesting. And I made another video. Tales of Ordinary Madness, which is named after a Charles Bukowski poem, I think. Um, that was just me. It was part of my first year of my university course degree. Um, I had to make a film for the film module, and uh, my tutor, Anthony, I, I was having all these ideas of doing an elaborate thing, like making a little remote control thing, putting a camera on it, and driving it around the estate. Um, but he said, why don't you just get a camera, walk around the estate, visit places that are important to you and just talk about them, just without any gimmicks. So, so that's what I did. And I brought little ideas about my personal little mythologies that I've attached to certain places and certain just silly little objects on the floor. You know, just trying to flesh out what the place means to me really and I think it turned out quite well I like it anyway it, it, it's quite personal it really talks 
it sums up a lot of things for me that have been going on in my head for the past few years. It made me realise certain demons that I have to exercise. I, uh, I made another short film uh, for a project last year we had to reinterpret a, a piece of art that had been performed in Hull in the 80s called The Source by Fran Cattell um, we were just allowed to listen to the audio of the video recording and then think about what it, what it was saying to us and then from the audio extrapolate some piece of art. I I had um, a lot of gushing water and clanging bells and it just sounded like a ritual in a cavern. There was summoning some kind of water elemental so I looked into ways of using that audio to physically represent some kind of a uh, form using liquid and um, uh, talking to a friend on the course Dave he, he mentioned that you can um, put certain sound frequencies below um, cornstarch and water and it'll form they call lublex these weird little forms bubble up and depending on the sound frequency you play so I decided to do that which I did and I made my own soundtrack for it and, and I put little figures in the midst of this um, this cornstarch which was bubbling up and it was quite a technical process to, trying to get the right frequency of the sound and the right positioning over the speaker and just to, to get this effect of the but it blew me away when I, when I was watching this stuff these these forms, writhing forms bubbling out of this cornstarch and water, they looked really spooky. It looked like they were animated, like it was some kind of stop motion animation, but it was all happening there in front of me. And I'm not sure what it was exactly about, but I think it turned out quite well. It was quite sinister. Um, I made a fairly recent video in the past few days actually um, it's with me standing in front of uh, a trees, a few different trees around the estate mature trees and just there uh, being kind of reverential towards them and just, just contemplating them and touching them and I made a soundtrack for it, a, a poem and, a, and a, a song, which you can watch online. That was a, I'm not sure what it was about. It's about me, and it's about the trees. The, the trees are a, a memory of the, the history of the place. Some of them are predate the houses and the. They were part of the farm and hedgerows and that used to be here. My parents used to play play on those fields when they were kids and, and now I'm living here. I just I like this that continuity and I like the I like the fact that the trees are still alive. And I just love trees. <laughs> That's basically what it's about. You have to wonder sometimes what what life is and what is the difference between a plant and a and an animated conscious being like us. Is there any consciousness in in plants, in trees? I think there is. Certain things you can take is it a curly in photograph if you cut a leaf in half and take a picture of it it'll, there'll be a ghost of the uh, of the leaf there in the photograph. I think just the 
simple organic processes do create some kind of aura and we don't quite know what consciousness is yet anyway I mean, it's, it's a is it another expression of life or is it a something contained in all living cells regardless of the complexity I don't know I just know that I like I like plants, I like to have them around because they have some kind of effect on me maybe I have some kind of effect on them and I like especially like trees <laughs> yeah, that'll do